All right, so, I mean, essentially all I have in here is like my dress uniform, uh, raincoat, just different kinds of uniforms, backpacks, rucksack. The closet in Christopher Avila's small bedroom pretty much reflects his life. These duffel bags are full of uniforms, jackets, other things we wear when we go to the field. It's about half of my closet. His civilian clothes are squeezed on one side, his National Guard gear on the other. Avila is 23. He's been in the Guard for three years, and he loves it. The commitment is one weekend a month and two weeks training in the summer, but that's seldom how it works out. So on paper, they ask for one week and a month, which is what you tell your employers. And sometimes the employer will have trouble with just even dealing with one week and a month because it's, hey, I have to work around scheduling your schedule and everyone else's. Oh, but this specific weekend out of that month, you can't work. So we have to shift that entire week around just so you have the day off. And the weekends often turn into four days, Avila says. He's an IT specialist and often gets called up to train on new technology. For a while, he had a job with a civilian company where he was able to use his IT skills. But he got called to guard training two weekends in a row and then a couple of weeks later, and then I had to go to, for two weeks to Fort Hood to do some training for some new stuff that my unit was getting. And when I came back, they ultimately came down to the conclusion that that would let me go because I wasn't meeting their quota or I was, you know, misconduct or something like that. There was none of that, but, you know, companies had to find a way around letting people go sometimes so that they don't get themselves in trouble. Companies that hire people in the National Guard cannot legally fire them for fulfilling their Guard commitment. But Avila says others in his unit have also found themselves out of a job after going on one too many Guard trainings. This one right here is a tiger with a DNA strand coming out of it, essentially. Avila has another job now using his graphic design skills. Many of the customers at T-Shirt Mart are military, and his boss is understanding about his training schedule. And he was like, all right, I understand. We, you know, we like your design talent. We like this. So we're going to bring you on. Just make sure you can keep us, you know, at least two weeks ahead of, hey, if you had to take these days off, let us know so we can try and work around a schedule. Finding a job is hard enough, but building a career is even more difficult for people with guard contracts. Bulletproof vest. Yep. <laughs> no, to be safe. Ride Sahib Mansour is 32. He's a platoon staff sergeant who served eight years as a linguist and translator for the Army National Guard, including one year on combat duty in Iraq. Really good unit. He's proud of the decorations yeah. on his dress uniform. I have 13 medals, but Bronze Star is the top one, which is the highest one. Uh, this is my Army achievement, Iraq campaign, overseas service ribbon. This is a National Guard one. Because Mansour served as a full-time recruiter for two years, as well as being deployed, he qualified for the GI Bill and is finishing a degree in security management. But that has not been enough to land him a job. I've applied everywhere. I don't even get an email back. And I've got a pretty good resume. I mean, I've, I've worked everywhere. I've done things. I have skills and experiences. I've even applied to a couple of security companies. And I've seen them hire the guy next to me who didn't even know how to fill out an application didn't hire me <laughs> and I'm in the same field. I'm going for a bachelor's degree within that field. Even in companies that favor hiring military, National Guardsmen find themselves competing for jobs with vets who don't have to ask their employer for time off every month. I asked Mansour Very if he thought his vets. commitment to the Guard was what was making it so like difficult that. to build a career. I didn't at first, but I'm positive it does right now. So until he finds a civilian job, Mansour offers his services as the honor guard at military funerals. The pay isn't much, about $100 a day, but it's something. I love it. Uh, I'll do it for free. We make a little bit of money, but I'm very proud of uh, being part of that team. I go to the next of kin and present the flag with a speech that we have to give. Really, really uh, beautiful ceremony. Um, we train a lot to be perfect at it. Mansour plans to stay in the National Guard for 20 years. That way, he'll earn retirement benefits. At least, he says, that's something, even if the civilian world doesn't offer him any security. Allison St. John, KPBS News.